Uh, first up, it's Lewis McLeod to begin uh, the McLeod half hour. Uh, he's going to be followed by his brother, Donald McLeod, who's not very happy bunny this morning because of what Nicola Sturgeon did. Lewis, a very good morning to you. Welcome. Yeah, good morning, mate. Now, I'm, I'm sure that uh, you will mark this as one of the most uh, sort of uh, biggest milestones in your broadcasting career that uh, you have fronted up for the first time the McLeod half hour. Now, I'm not hoping, I'm hoping not to make a habit of this. Um, yeah, but it's I thought, kind of special. You know, <laughs> I hardly see my brother on this. Well, I mean, you're not going to see him dovetailing each other all week. You're not going to see much of him from now on either because he's not been allowed to go anywhere and you certainly oh, can't have a drink in a really bar. Not great, is it? It's awful, isn't it? Absolutely terrible. Listen, I thought what we should do though is kick off with, uh, with obviously Donald Trump because clearly Donald Trump has had quite a week. I mean, uh, you know, it was less than a week ago. Uh, he was he was taken into hospital, Walter Reed Hospital in um, uh, in Maryland. Um, he didn't look that well. Suddenly, a couple of days later, he was fine again. That's right. You know, it's very much it's a virus like no other, but it seems to be terrified of me. <laughs> and you might be immune, Mr. President, I understand. Well, you know, I'm that and I, well, immune, I'm illiterate, but never mind. The thing is, it just kind of came in the window like a song and just flew away again. And we don't really know why, but it's probably because it's it's useless against me. It has no defences, no defences. None at all. And normally we would get Nigel Farage to comment on um, the president's <laughs> uh, state of health and, and, and indeed his campaign and how that's going. Um, does Nigel have any words for the president? Well, the thing about it is, now I was working on my impersonation of you, and if I if I sort of gruff him up a little bit, it sounds a little bit like you. Because I mean, of course, plank of the week, you know, there's a sort of similarity. It's it, it it's Mike Farage. Yes. I mean, but the thing about it is, you know, no, 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 let me drink. That's the whole point. Do you, you know, know what was very funny? I, I did have a drink with Nigel Farage a little while ago, and he told me that you did him. Um, and he was <laughs> laughing at the, the time that you did on Dead Ringers, um, a, uh, a, a an impersonation of the bloke flying the plane over the Burnley football match. And you went, right, go over to, over to the uh, to the pilot of the plane, and it was him. <laughs> and he yeah, said, that's I right. Yeah, he said, I, I shouldn't have found it funny, but he said it was funny. <laughs> it's horrible when the sketch has been really scathing and... Uh, and it's arch satire, and then you have to meet them. You never really know how they're going to react. Right. No, no, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but Nigel's actually a great guy. The thing about Nigel Farage, he's not like most politicians. He actually can make uh, make fun of himself. He can take the mickey out of himself. And as he says to me, I mean, once you've been in a plane crash, actually, the rest of the world, it kind of pales into insignificance, and everything else that happens to you uh, doesn't really matter that much. Well, Mike, I actually think that's a, that's a really good point. I think that was what really spurned him to just... Uh, say what he felt and and those performances in uh, the European Parliament I, I thought were kind of amazing I mean yeah. look, you know Van Rimpoy I mean look he looks like a low-grade bank clerk uh, you smell like a damp rag I mean who are you it was almost the sort of by surviving a plane crash he got a uh, second wind and uh, and has really went for it yeah absolutely right now I don't know whether you've been able to catch the uh, uh, this week's debate because obviously last week's debate Joe Biden and Donald Trump just shouted at one another um, last night we had Mike Pence who looks to me uh, like one of those dummies at a stingray um, you know slightly uh, <laughs> odd looking um, head and a very weird looking head a sort of a head of hair as well um, yeah he didn't he, he doesn't appear to be very interesting to me that's right. I mean, if you if you really uh, if you if you because he doesn't move really, does he? No. Very still. And uh, a fly landed on my head during the debate <laughs> and stayed there for two minutes. Uh, I thought I was dead meat, but it was the most know, interesting. He, it was he's the most very interesting, uh, most interesting. The voice two is, he is. He's kind of uh, very polite. It was much more staid than I think obviously last week's. But yeah. he seemed more civil. Uh, it, <laughs> it may have been the screen right enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, the fly, the two minutes of the fly was the most time anybody'd spent listening to him, I think, at any point, really. Two <laughs> minutes is a long time in the world of, of my pens, it seems to me. <laughs> it was actually Trump. He was miniaturized. I just wanted to get close to his ear to give him some advice, but I couldn't get in, you know? Well, that was the other thing about Joe Biden. I mean, did he or did he not uh, wear an earpiece? You know, there was all sorts of pictures going out on uh, social media of him with what looked like something up his arm, uh, a black thing in his ear. You know, was he in fact being fed the answers? If he was being fed the answers, he needs to fire the guy that was feeding them to him. Well, normally, you know, if there's, you know, if my flies are undone, then I just talk out my ass. But, you know... Uh, I, I, oh, come on, man. You know, yeah, I suppose anything that, that Biden would do, it would look like he was just uncomfortable, but it's, they're watched so critically during those debates that 
yeah, they've, I mean, would they get directions? And what would they say to them? Could you imagine giving Donald Trump stage directions? Yeah. It would be the hardest thing in the world. Well, you know? I love that guy who, who whose name escapes me for the moment who does that that uh, that that sort of com comedic thing where he's talking to, uh, you know, he uses the, any any kind of speech by Boris Johnson uh, or he did Dominic Cummings, you know, where he's in the other room feeding him the answers. It's very funny. Oh, yeah. Well, but I think that's the translator's job. You remember when... Uh, it was the whole bedroom, the mattress thing, and it, it was it, he was only in power what a week, less than a week. Yeah, you know, and I'm a, I'm a germaphobe. I mean, it, it was hilarious, really. That four days later, Putin was uh, sort of defending it, but the translator I thought got the best gag. It was you know you've got the Russian translator. Forgive me, I can't do Russian. The the Burgers Nuburg. I doubt very much whether I am incumbent president of the United States. <laughs> you know, the Miss World would go to a Miss World competition. <laughs> then take home two women of diminished responsibility. And then he goes, albeit they're the best in the world. I fell off my chair. It was I the know. funniest. I know. It was the funniest news. It was like these these superpowers just having a laugh with each other. I know, was... I know. You just think when the cameras disappear, they're, they're just you know, for, for telling telling jokes to each other for the rest of the yeah. day. But, I mean, what about Ian Blackford? Because I know that uh, uh, his voice well... was heard uh, this week in the Houses of Parliament. Uh, he didn't have much to say about Margaret Farrier, the woman who's well, now... Well, I think uh... they use the terms now. That... Mr. Squeaker, Mr. Squeaker. <laughs> It's I remember because well no right, right rightfully so they're raging and he's really been sort of all, he, all I've really kind of caught him saying is Margaret needs a period of reflection mm. um, and notably the thing about her going into church you know she went into church she was spreading the good word among other things <laughs> uh, it, it's it's kind of horrific that. That happened. Really. I know. You know so, well, also, what nobody said William much, Wallace. <laughs> well, I mean, nobody said anything about the poor people in the Houses of Parliament. You know, there's quite a few people of of, of an age uh, who should be considered vulnerable, and Parliament <laughs> is not a very safe uh, sort of environment if you're trying not to catch COVID because it's narrow well, corridors. It. Everybody's kind of squeezed in. I know they're not, you know, in the chamber. It's all very well, but walking around. It's really, really tight corridors and you walk into people and she's walking around, you know, effectively with this terribly, what we're told is a terribly dangerous disease. And yet, yep. uh, you know, she's still in a job. Well, they should have had Ian both of them just kind of crack her one over the backside with a bat, you know, <laughs> silly mid off, out. <laughs> well, you mean Lord, my Lord both of them. Lord sure. both of them, yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. Who's How, how soon before my Lord both of them is, uh, is seen uh, in flagrante uh, in one of the bars, you know, where he's decided to <laughs> rest for the week? Well, I hope afternoon. he gives me a call. I mean, this is this is, sounds like a party because are the bars going to close there? I don't think so. Well, I mean, at the moment, you're going to have to come a bit further south than Newcastle, I think. You're going to have to probably come all the way maybe down to London to find a pub that's actually open. I think everything north of Watford is going to be shut down. It's, it's crazy. I mean, my brother, I, feel, I, mean, I really feel for Donald because they they spent a fortune on turning... And the garage, uh, you know, it looked their, great, the didn't flagship, it? Yeah, well, the, the flagship venue that they've got, they, they, they spent a lot of money and turned it into this electric garden, right. obeying all the rules, mm. trying to do something kind of stylish, and now this... Yeah. Mm, I know. It's absolutely horrendous. Well, he's going to be talking very shortly to us, and I'm sure uh, he'll be telling us how annoyed he is. Let's finish up with um, with a guy that uh, I haven't heard much about lately, but apparently I'm told he was seen on a beach the other day um, with a stick that was two metres long, trying to make sure that people stayed two metres away from him. I'm talking about Alan Carr, um, who, <laughs> who, was a, who was doing some kind of stunt with a stick. Anyway, is all I can say. <laughs> but that's not the first time. <laughs> well, you see, because, of course, you can't even have a studio audience. Chatty man is just going to be called man. And what about <laughs> the drink? It's absolutely terrible, Mike. Yeah, You, you know, can't... there's no booze in the cabinet. Yeah, and you can't go on tour or anything, can you? You can't go no. see your adoring fans anywhere. I've still got a rider, though. Have you? Oh, very good. I'm very glad to hear it. Well, listen, Lewis, how's the, how's the, how's the first spinning image gone down? Um, I was surprised. Uh, well, to, did I, I mean, read, I, by the way, correctly, that Matt Ford is doing Trump on... on uh, that's on, right, yeah. Why is he doing it? Oh, well, I think he's doing a good job of it. He's, he's writing for the show, too. Yeah, but he's, oh, so he's written himself a, ple a part, has he? <laughs> Top man. Watch that There's guy. There's all these Trumps lining up outside the production offices going... Listen, that's piss. I can do this. Give me a go at it. <laughs> well, listen, you should tell him from me that I think yours is better. He, oh, he, thanks, he, he man. Won't well, I'll pass that on. He won't appreciate that because he, he blocked me a few uh, a few years ago for saying he wasn't very funny. 
<laughs> but there we are. Listen, Lewis, thank you very much indeed. Lewis McLeod, a uh, man of many voices uh, and a man indeed who is trying to get a drink like most people are in Scotland. 